G'day everyone, Mark here from Mark and Cars. It is an absolute stunning day here in Launceston, Tasmania. I'm outside the National Automobile Museum of Tasmania. Let's go in and have a look. Here in the entrance of the uh, museum you can see there is uh, plenty of memorabilia, literature, models, lots of stuff for the enthusiast. Let's have a look around. Let's go in the museum proper and have a look. An overall of the room. This looks like an upper level, then uh, we'll walk down to the lower level fill. So just as soon as you walk in the front entrance, there's a beautiful GT Falcon here, XY GT HO Phase 3, recognisable by the uh, prominent shaker in the hood there. It's just a cold air intake, but called a shaker affectionately due to the fact it does sit there and shake as the engine's rumbling. This looks like an original Tasmanian car. Still got the, still got the original license Rego sticker from 1972. These cars were made from 1971 and there may have actually been some 1972 production is my understanding. And parked right next to it is a lovely GT40 tribute car. He's an Australian tribute car built out of Queensland by a company called Roaring Forties. Absolute beauty. And next to that, a lovely Cobra replica. Great looking car, those side pipes look amazing. Very nice original uh, Volkswagen Superbug here. These are about 1972, 73 if I remember. And parked right near the Superbug is a lovely 356. Chrome wheels. Actually uh, look like five and a half inch wheels, so they've been upgraded slightly. Lovely black on tan. It's a 356B T6 car, looking at that big back window and the twin grills on the back. It's a right hand drive car. In lovely older restoration by the looks of the interior, but presents absolutely beautifully, as are all the cars in the uh, museum here. has been fully optioned. It's got the clock, it's got the radio. So for a um, 356 normal, looks like all the boxes were ticked. Very nice 911 SC here. Nice G-Series car. We've got a lovely Maserati Mirac here, about 1973 through to 75, that sort of era. Always a soft touch of these cars, it was saw one when I was very young. Owned by a photographer in the town I grew up, which is a very rare sight. This here is a Daimler SP250, not a very common car in Australia. They uh, were built in the mid 60s sort of like as a car to compete against the Jag E-types they've actually got a uh, small V8 in them and the styling is very um, almost American 
which is quite interesting. But there's some beautiful detail, small fins on the back, almost reminiscent of like Sunbeam Tiger. The interior's got some nice little speeds to style bucket seats almost. That little switch in the middle of the steering wheel there, that's actually the indicator. quite a steep windshield on it for a car of this style and of the ear in all honesty they tend to be laid back a little bit more by this point but the nice chrome hinges prominent headlights you know bulging guards and a pretty interesting um i guess nose or grille on the front which sort of you can imagine gives the car a bit of a nickname of the groper out there parked just behind the uh, sp250 we've got a Austin Healey, it's 100, beautiful colourway, look at this, that leather strap across the bonnet looks fantastic, almost the same era as the SP250, it's parked behind, and if you have a look, the interiors are very comparable, even to the point where the gauge layout, steering wheel and indicator again on the switch in the centre, you can see this has been built as a lightweight, don't really see there but there's a like a piece of cord in the door there that's actually the door release to get in out of the car and show you how much of a stripped out car these things are no external door handles we've got a fantastic Morgan three-wheeler this is sort of like the uh, newer style generation of the three-wheelers has a much more um, modern take and boat tail on it compared to the earlier Morgan three-wheelers but fantastic looking cars how's the size of this thing Plymouth Roadrunner 440 cubic inch motor it is a monster the epitome of 60s muscle car. Absolute cracker of a car. Mate, this thing makes a lot of noise. The badging looks fantastic on the side. Lovely Ford Thunderbird here. They're almost a baby blue colour. White walls. About nine, mid 50s this car would be, about 1955, 56 I reckon. It is an absolute beauty. Never seen one in this colour before. It's quite often in two tone colours. Here we've got a Di Tommaso Pantera. Have a look at this thing, will you? Italian muscle car is probably the best way to describe it. Those of you that aren't familiar with these cars, they have a Ford 5.8 litre, mid-mounted V8 in them with a ZF transaxle, so for gearbox. How's the size of the guards on the thing? A 1949 Fiat 500. I've actually never seen one of this vintage. This is sort of like the predecessor of what we know as the Bambino or the uh, Cinquecento. Absolute unbelievable looking car. 
70s Ford Capri 3000 GT. They actually had a V6 motor under the bonnet. Real handful of a car to drive, but very fast for the era. Got a couple of early Holden FJs here. We've got a utility and a sedan, both in what probably would have been matching colours when they were new, but been resprayed in slight variations of those colours by the looks of it. This lovely old 1959 Mercedes 190. Beautiful looking shape, have a look at this car. Doing some old stuff here. 1906. Wooden body. Wouldn't work. Also, in the entrance before the main part of the museum, there's a couple of Alphen race cars here. This one over here looks like a streamliner. These are Australian race cars for those of you who aren't familiar with the brand. And I'm not sure what this one looks I'm sure there's some plaque around somewhere to tell us. Looks like it's got a uh, four cylinder motor in it, judging by the uh, twin Weber carburetor sticking out the back there. Mid mounted race car. Probably uh, race cars from around the 60s era that were built locally to compete against the likes of Lola and Lotus, those other sorts of lightweight races of the time. If you're ever passing through Launceston, please think about dropping into the National Automobile Museum of Tasmania. It's well worth the stop regardless of the type of cars that are your preference. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos to come. I'm Mark, thanks for watching Mark and Cars.